Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a look at using those string methods that you just saw being used in very simple situations. And we're going to see how you can sort of throw them together to solve some simple slash medium level problems with string manipulation. So let's look at the first one here. A little method called formal name. You're given a name that comes into this method, like John Andrew Janetka, and you're asked to reformat it all official, like you may see on a letter. So that might be a common task. So notice what this task involves. We need to pull out the J, so the first letter of the string. We need to pull out the A, the first letter of the second name. And then I want to grab the entire ending of the name. And of course, join it with the Mr. in front. Now if I just jump to the last line, you're going to see uh, how I do it in the end here, is I add Mr. plus first initial plus spacebar plus second initial plus spacebar plus third and third is the entire last part right the ending so let's see how we get these parts so let's grab the first initial out first this one's pretty easy to do we just say hey name grab me the substring which means take out a part start at zero and go up to but do not include slot one so that's a little weird but it basically means only grab slot zero so that's going to grab out the J. So now I've got the J and I've saved it into first. Now what I need to do is I need to find the A. But the thing is you have to know where to hunt for it. I don't want you to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's not going to be the fifth spot for every single name we pass in. So what you really want to look for here is find the first space bar. And if you can grab the first space bar, you know that next initials right afterwards. So you'll see here now I'm hunting with the index of method for the first space bar in the string name. So hey name, find me the index of space bar. It always sends you back the first one. So we get some position back. Now in this case, it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. What I want to do is grab letter 5. So you'll see here, when I go to grab the second initial, I use this line here. I say position plus one spot extra, all the way to position, plus two. Now remembering how that works, it won't include position plus two. Four plus two is six. So it's only going to grab slot five. So it's one letter again coming out of this. Next, I want to find the next space bar. Now this is a good example. You can't just use this line. That will only find you the first space bar. So basically what I've done here is I've said start looking for a space bar, but start your search at position plus one. Remember, position is the position of the first space bar. So if I start one extra slot to the right, I should come across the next space bar as my next space bar. And then when I grab that, I do something very similar. I grab from the next slot over all the way to the end. And so that's that one right there. Notice with this substring, I'm only giving it one number. I give it position two, the position of the second space bar, plus one. So I start from here, and it'll just grab to the end, because here, I didn't put an end position. And if you don't put an end position, it just goes right to the end of the string. That basically grabs the three parts. I glue them together with the plus sign, and send that back to the user, and it works beautifully. Second example here, how many vowels? This is a great one. It's a must-know for you. <clears throat> a sentence comes in. I want to count how many vowels there are. I'm just going to consider my vowels A, E, I, O, U. Now, this trick, shouldn't really call it a trick, but this nice logical idea can help you out in a lot of problems. You'll see here I've made a string that contains the vowels. This is going to be really useful. So remember that we have this up here. Now I start my count variable at zero, and I start an awesome for loop that's going to go letter by letter through this sentence. Okay, so remember what I'm going through. I'm not going through this. I'm going through the sentence letter by letter, and I pull the letter out. So let's take a look at that. I go as far as sentence.length in my loop. I don't think length is, no, that's good. I go grab that letter out. So there's a standard grab a single letter out of a string. 
and then I'm going to see is that letter inside of here because if that letter is in here then it must be a vowel so notice which one I'm using to do index of I'm saying hey alpha alpha is this one which is this tell me the index of this letter and if the letter I pulled out is found in here it's going to send me back a number 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 depends where in the sentence or sorry depends where in alpha 0 1 2 3 4 but if it's not found it'll send back a negative 1 saying it's not found in there which means it's not a vowel so notice my question is just if alpha index of letter sends me back 0 or larger then it's one of these it sent me back a position that's good it's a vowel I add one otherwise I do nothing when the whole loop is finished going through the sentence I can return that count okay this is good for if you say hey I need a password it has to have a number well you could loop through the string and do this kind of check but do numbers here you better be finding a number somewhere in there okay so it's good for a whole bunch of little tiny text tasks how many times does the word the appear in the sentence? This is just to show you that sometimes substring um, and length, you've got to do a little bit of mental math here. All I'm going to do is go through the sentence looking for the word the, but notice I'm going to keep this sort of simple. The word the has to have a space bar after it, or if it's the end of the sentence, maybe the word the has a period at the end. Now, I know you may think of some other weird conditions like comma, but we're not going to look at those for this simple example. But it just goes to show you that looking for the word the, you may have to sometimes think of some of the uh, trickier situations where the word pops up. Now, look at what I do here. I start at zero in my sentence, and I go all the way up to three positions. My word the is three letters long. I better start this, or sorry, I better stop this search three letters earlier than the end because if I'm on the very last letter of the sentence and I try to search for the word the well the word the is gonna spill over right and probably cause us an out of bounds there so stop a little early string temp I pull out a four letter string here because I am checking against four letters right that's four characters and I'm asking if temp equals the is true or temp equals the with a period is true, then I can increase my count. When it's all done scanning through, return the count. This next one here, pad 5, this is actually a nice applicable one to a lot of data sending on the internet or by computers or data saving. Sometimes you have a number, but instead of just writing the number, you always want to write the number. Uh, in a way that's called padded. So padded would be like this. This would be the number 33 padded with 5. This would be the number 100 padded to make 5. This would be the number 9999 padded for 5. And if the number is already 5, that's fine. You don't add any zeros on. So this problem is not too bad. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the number that the user gives me and I'm going to convert it to a string. So you'll see here my little conversion that we've seen before integer to string num now it's a string I'm gonna ask myself the length of the string hey num string tell me your length now I know how many characters are in that string so with 33 the answer was 2 with a hundred that was gonna be 3 now I just do very simple math here how many zeros do I have to add so 5 minus the length that I just calculated I'm gonna set up a for loop to run that many times so one to zero count and each time I'm gonna do this little string build in here now this is a nice string building instead of adding on to the end of a string I'm adding the zero on to the beginning of the string so if you think about this whatever num string is it started out let's say is 33 I'm gonna say zero plus 33 so that's gonna leave me with o 33 the loop's going to go back again, and it's going to say, hey, numstring, set yourself equal to 0 plus whatever numstring is. Well, 0 
plus whatever num string is. So you can see the zeros are going to be added to the front until we end up getting something like that. And so that's a great little routine there for padding up, and then I send it back. Now, this last one here, or I should say we're almost there, numbers join. This is a great one. I give an array, just getting fancy here. You'll see how we can take an array okay, of numbers, and I'm going to join them all up into one big long number string. So you'll see here I just start a string as being equal to nothing. I go through that array right to the end, and I say result is result plus convert that particular number to a string. And it just keeps building on, right? 17, 1725, 172582, 172825. So this one works nicely, and then I send it back. Now the very last one here uses a bit of a combo. Pad 5, that's a method we just wrote up here, right? That pads the number up. Check this one out. This time, I'm going to take the array of numbers in again, and it's pretty well the exact same routine as you just did right here. But instead of adding the number on, look at what I've done. I've added pad 5 of that number. So whatever the number is, the 17, I'm not adding 17 on. I'm adding pad 5, 17. It jumps up, runs pad 5 on 17, returns me 00017, and 00017 is added on. And then it keeps going, loop, 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 loop through the numbers, and you eventually get this. Now, the reason we've shown you these methods, you know, wasn't for you to go and memorize these methods, but the point is to show you that there's no set rule how you're going to use these string methods. The whole point is, is that you just sort of have to puzzle what can you do with the methods to solve the problem that you've been asked to solve. So one nice good practice thing for you to do would be to go through these on your own. There is an empty file here in string practice. You've seen the general algorithm or method I use to solve them. Now can you actually go through and do these yourself? Okay, and then test out in the runner right? Whether you can do it without peeking at these, of course, they're always there if you get stuck. After you finish that, I know there's also some extra practice problems you should run through. Even though you may not focus on string manipulation in your code, the type of logic you use and puzzling those methods together to help you solve your problem, that's a really important coding skill that every programmer needs and it's going to help you in whatever you decide to code which whatever class so that's why we like the string class right it's nice to test you can come up with some pretty good problems use your loops use your variables use your ifs and have fun trying to figure those out and remember you might figure out how to do it away differently than the way i did it okay there's always various ways to do this have fun with those hope that helps you a little bit